Uh, call the meeting to order at 5.32. Uh, any adjustments to the agenda? No. Okay. Nope. okay. Then a motion to accept the minutes. It's a move for minutes of August 31st. I second the motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of August 31st. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That brings us to Tom Goddard, Funny Fire Chief, report of ISO rating. So, several weeks ago now, a few weeks ago now, you all received notification of our ISO reclassification, so on and so forth. And what preceded that was um, a, a lot of work over and over several years um, with with our intention of challenging, quote unquote, if you will, ISO to to uh, see if we could improve our, our ISO rating classification. Um, so a lot of work was done. A lot of behind the scene about behind the scenes uh, st work was done. Um, so on and so forth brought us to a point certainly after uh, the municipal water system came into play for us um, and then we we did some work with and for that that system to to prove some things out water flows and, and so on and so forth um, some additional sprinkler systems came into play in, in the village um, so at the end of the day uh, we finally met with uh, our representative uh, from ISO our regional rep um, we had several meetings. Um, they reviewed a number of different things, how we operate, our mutual aid agreements, our auto, automatic aid agreements, uh, dispatching service, 911 service, uh, run cards, our training records, maintenance records, all of our equipment, our apparatus, so on and so forth. And to boil that all down after about a year and a half of that, um, uh, our ISO class, uh, rating classification did actually change and improved dramatically. Uh, we went from, we improved from a uh, classification of nine uh, townwide to a classification of five uh, within a five mile radius, uh, actually five, mi five road miles of our fire station. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, five road miles from the fire station in Westminster, Westminster West, and Dummerston Center. So any any properties within the town of Putney that lie within five road miles of any of those fire stations improve to a class five. The reason we, that we that we can include those stations, those mutual aid stations, is because of our automatic aid agreements um, and the apparatus that, that that comes into town on those automatic aid calls. Um, the remainder of the town. Uh, even though it's even though there's a, a decrease in the number, they went from a class nine to a class ten. The reality is that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that 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 the service is any worse to those folks than to those properties that it has been in the past. It's just a, a change in the way ISO classifies and ranks. Um, so they're they're still a class nine, class ten, um, and unless the only thing that's going to improve that is if we build at least one more fire station or uh, we get water in these places that are, that's immediately accessible to us. Um, so. so can you explain just for people that don't know what this ISO rating does for them as far as, it's their, it's, it's their insurance, yep, it's, uses this classification? Right, it's a numerical to... classification that insurance companies um, use to, to uh, rate their insurance premiums for, for towns and areas. Um, so what this all means is uh, it will actually be putting this this new rating doesn't actually take effect until November 1st um, so the first part of October we're actually going to start to put out a lot of information to people um, just to let them know boil it all down for them real quick what what has gone on what's brought us to this point what the classification means and encourage folks to contact their insurance companies to talk with them about about improvement in their in their um, savings and their premiums. Tom, is um, there a way to put that information in sort of a mapped form so that people would actually know, you know, 
location by location, whether they fall in or out. Of yeah, the, yeah. And, and what I, what I've got to do is is I I've I've tried to do it on on uh, mapping programs mm -hmm. to try to make it easy, but I'm not agreeing with what those programs are, are saying. So a lot of these places, I'm actually going to go out and drive them mm -hmm. and see see what that what that road mileage is. So yeah, at the end of the day, we'll, if somebody has a question, they call. We'll be able to tell them immediately whether they're within that five miles or outside of. And refresh me. ISO, the acronym stands. Uh, Insurance for Services office. office. Okay. Yep. Um, and and from everything that we've been told directly from our ISO reps, uh, is is property owners should see a substantial uh, decrease, a substantial savings in their in their premiums. So uh, all the hard work and and all the I dotting and T crossing pays off. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, we say a, a resolution for those outlying areas is a, a new, new fire station. Yeah. That would sort of indicate that sort of a specific area. Exactly. Might, uh, we, where is that? Where is uh, that? the out the the farthest reaches of Putney Mountain? Okay. Uh, West Hill, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the far reaches of West Hill from here, we may be able to get it covered from the other, other direction. Um, and pretty much that's, that's it. Hickory Ridge Road, the, the far end, maybe. We've, got to, we've still got to figure that out. And then is it the close to the firehouse, access to water, is that pond, you know, hydrant system, something? Yep, yeah, and, and it's a, it's a uh, essentially for, and for our purposes, it's gonna be a, a, a hydrant, a dry hydrant with, with um, a, an adequate an supply of water. Yeah, yeah it can't it can't be a sure. low low volume stream or anything like that. It's got to be a, a substantial volume of water that's available to us. Um, are you promoting the idea of a new fire station? No, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> no I just not, wanted to. Not, I just no, wanted to clarify. No, 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 not at all. That's, uh, we don't that's want just, that to be the one yeah, thing that we no, get out of this. No, not at all. That's just, that's just one of the one of the key factors that. And distance the, from a fire yeah, station. Exactly. Are there mm -hmm. realistic water supplies that we should be approaching people about in order to increase your capacity? To or be honest, everyone that that's a bit, that's available, you already we already have it. Right. Um, the only option would be underground tanks. Yeah. Which isn't out of the out of the realm of possibility, but yeah. Um, it's just got to be the right locations and, oh, the, and all that. So, yeah. okay. So we're always looking at things and looking at trying to figure out different ways that we can get water. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Good work. Yeah, Thank, you. Good. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. All right. Uh, next on our agenda. I didn't put agenda. anything in here for energy committee. What's that? I didn't put anything in the packet okay. for the energy committee. We're Would just, the yeah. energy committee report about Wyndham Wood Heat, and I would assume, assume that's why Morgan is probably here. That's correct. <laughs> so we were asked to go over this um, estimate that we got from Marion Major and the Wyndham Wood Heat Initiative for you guys, and it was the Energy Committee's feeling that for both projects, well, I'll start with one, for the firehouse, that building's only six years old, it's got a condensing gas boiler, the lifespan on it, it's still got time this kind of cost for another kind of unbounded product, even if it is more local. It's hard to say anything you need to lock in rates below $2 a gallon right now on, on fuel with this. Um, and then for this building in particular, where we use less and it still has a, I mean, the cost of this boiler is just, it's expensive, these yeah. systems for, for overhaul and everything. Yeah. And what we have in here where the forced air ducting is probably just insufficient to get to this office, like we know a little bit. I think that it's better off to just do a split system or something with a heat pump in the future if you want to and get some AC out of the deal as well and become a little more efficient that way. And the group just felt like we didn't see any reason to recommend this forward because of the cost and the, uh, the existing piece over there. And we're not that bad in this basement either, comparatively. It's nice that it just got insulated, these kind of things. I know you do want to focus a little bit more heat to this side of it. That could be an additional fan or a zoning issue just on the ductwork, but additionally, I think that with what we can do with solar power and purchasing that power and locking in rates in the future, that's a little bit smarter for a town as well with the unbounded costs of the pellets just as a, a hedge. So that was our finding was just that we didn't want to recommend this going forward right now at least um, 
is something to consider when looking at the retrofit of this building, but in terms of the group, we didn't find the pellets for that interesting to us with some of the efficiency technologies that are out there right now. Yeah. No, I think of, you know, perhaps a supplemental system of a mini split would make a lot of sense for at yeah. least sort of those offices allowed. Exactly. Along that for what's there or something like that. Yeah. And then, and then look at supplementing it with a PV exactly. system. And um, we have locked in our, we, we're locked in out there for the towns, for most of the towns electricity right now. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I guess that's that's all I have on the window would be the issue. Um, if there's anything I want to talk about. Yeah. I just, I, what about potential future expansion upstairs, if that were to happen? Would this all still be sufficient? I think you'd just have a larger BTU heat pump. Okay. You know, some more tonnage if you wanted, if, if that was the recommendation. You could look at, there's nothing here to warrant central heating, unfortunately, you know, for size and anything like that. Um, so my recommendation, what we do is the heat pump stuff. Yeah, and I would think that, you know, if we were to want to, you know, that space in particular is well suited to a, to a heat pump yeah. because it's a single large space, mm -hmm. you know, the cost of installation would be relatively low. Um, and also, again, we could supplement it with solar. I, I don't know whether you guys, I don't know whether the Energy Committee in general has explored this, but um, there's a fairly significant portion of the fire station roof that's facing, you know, basically it's it's got one section that runs east-west and one that runs north-south, and there's two sort of big triangles that are reasonably south-facing. Yeah. It might be worth exploring that for supplemental solar at some point. I mean, I don't know. Where that's in terms of, yeah, well, you guys pay the bill on that meter that's in there. The, the net metering program only allows you to have a meter on one solar facility, as yeah. an off-taker. So the fire station isn't our largest user by far, it's the wastewater treatment plant. Yeah. And so do you know how much- Right, but we could allocate, we can allocate those credits to anything. Correct, but we'd yeah. have to negate, the, what, what would be the best opportune thing to do is to take the firehouse and put a system on just for their use. Right, yeah. behind you can their take meter. the- Right. And take then, them off and of the And take them meter. off and put more to the wastewater yeah. treatment plant if we're within threshold there. Because we don't ever meet, we, we, do we always have to pay on that one or do we, no, we don't always. Yeah. But in the winter, well, we haven't really. There's, I think if the allocations were moved around, they could be, there's like two bills that sometimes we have to pay on. Yeah. Right now, just so we're aware, um, net metering 1.0 ends December 31st of this year. Right. That accrues a 19 cent credit, which you guys are currently getting on your bills, right. plus some recs if you want them. And next year, that's going to be reduced by two or three cents, depending. Rooftop installations will still get you a penny, but they're looking for brownfield sites. And when I mean, the roof is going to get you close, but it might be at 17 cents. It still decreases the payback. And so one thing to consider is that they've stopped taking any applications for anything that's 150 kilowatts or up. Yeah. But 15 kilowatts is still in there. Yeah. And you can derate that to 20 kilowatts, you know, you can do whatever you want, 1.25 on that if you needed to, 1.3 the um, on a, to the inverter DC ratio, but that building would only support that basically anyway. I was going to say, I would like to see something that's like self, it's just self-contained in that one, especially when you're talking about your emergency services building. Right. If that I could mean, operate at a time when we have something catastrophic that happens, mm -hmm. it would be nice to it's be able not, to... Yeah, it's, it's not, a, not sufficient for that, but yes, I mean, yeah. you could put a power wall battery on that size yeah. system, yeah. let's say, but that's only three to four kilowatt hours of a 25 amp draw. And that's not going to do much for that building yeah. in a situation. You guys have like a battery that. generator over there already, I'm sure. Yes, you know, we do. Automatic transfer yeah. switch and everything. Yeah. What yeah. would be interesting, at least in this, is that could charge the battery that tripped the generator. So you would have yeah. Yeah. the startup battery charge. Capacity, capacity for that. Capacity for that. The one thing I'd say, though, is there, so Green Mountain Power is still accepting applications for these 15 kilowatt systems yeah. before the end of this year. Commercial or residential? Or any, does any it person doesn't matter. matter. The yeah. thing that happens with this, though, is that the town doesn't have any tax liability, so these projects are... The there. offset is not great, yeah. The question is, would you guys want to get into another situation in a power purchase agreement, or what I'm, what we're doing with the School for International Training, my company is, I don't guess it's on the record, but it's a it's a flip where we're taking a tax equity investor and loaning them money because we have as a case, right. cheaper access to capital, right, and then flipping that back after the period with a small PPA set up in the middle 
but they're making a percentage return on their investment rather than just right. going out on this 10% off. Yeah, I think we're saying. way ahead of what we're, yeah. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. I'll let that. you go, just <laughs> just to know that if you guys- <laughs> Only think, because, I mean, I think it's something to explore, right, but- I'll get, I'll get out of here, just 15 kilowatts, that goes away and reduces in price. The biggest thing is how would a town want to do that as a small system? Would you guys want to finance that municipally, in which case? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're yeah. thinking you guys could figure out. We're willing to, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll explore you know, it. Worth looking. I mean, it's you know, looking at because they, the CPG application is very simple for a 15 kilowatt system. Well, we're not going to have anything ready before December. What it, no, but if you do the application, then you're grandfathered in for extra period of time. Yeah. Um, and this is not a hard install, you know what I mean? No, it's, it's not. It yeah. might be worth just doing the research on it because the thing you could do with a system of that size on that building is you could run, like, in the, in the equipment base, you could run a mini split, which again, it's a single space. It would be easy. Put the put the PV on the roof, and that would over time. Oh, that's how we, when people that may be a good way to go. People don't recommend solar out water panels anymore because of the efficiency of these things. Yeah, we're dealing with air to water systems as well now. Right. We're trying to hydronic systems right. with the same. Right. So can I just get back to the yes. wind and wood heat thing? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because no, no, I. I just want to know how to move forward with this. Do I tell them that we have decided as a as a town that we're moving forward? Well, they're waiting for us to mm -hmm. tell them what to do. Um, I mean, my sense is that it's a it's a huge investment for a um, nominal amount of return. Uh, yeah, yeah, nominal yeah. amount of return and. And you could buy solar panels and heat pumps for the same price. Exactly, and and then we're not burning anything, um, and that's a that's a better way to go. You know, if this was a if this was a my guess is if we were a bigger operation, and this was sort of a better capital investment for us in that respect, then it might be worth or if our doing. Right. Right. If it was, was part and parcel, or was or was was the yeah. renovation. Yeah. And you know, tightening up of this right. Level. This will make you money with twenty five percent off. They're mm -hmm. offering a hundred thousand dollars for five hundred thousand BTUs, which is yeah, real yeah, money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I, I mean, my feeling would be that yes, we should probably. And I don't. Do you want a motion on this, or how do we need to do it? But no, I don't the, think we need a motion. I can just let them know that we've explored with the energy. The energy committee has taken a look at it. Yeah, we've yeah. asked as many questions as we can. We just don't feel like we're going to move forward right yeah. now. Yeah, no, it's a, it would be a tough financial decision for us to justify. I think to the taxpayers. So. Yeah, I don't need a motion of consensus. I mean, the energy committee already talked about it. It's in their minutes. Yeah. And. I just want to let them know so that they're not wasting any more time waiting for yeah. us to make a decision. And I'll let you guys go. I just wanted to mention one thing that I am thinking about as an energy committee chair and, and how you tie this same problem we just talked about, about tax liability, but also counterparty credit and how these power purchase agreements normally work. Developers want a big town who's not going to go out of business to sign up to use their power, right, or to get receive production credits. And homeowners don't have access to that same thing. Solar cities and the giant companies will do so. But often at you know decreased rates for everyone's returns, they get their money too. And if there was a way for us to dream on how to pay her, the idea that town could be the principal counterparty creditor to a solar system and allow its residents access to that power, I think we could marry a couple of ideas where you could pool people who don't have to put money out of pocket but get the same stuff you guys do, like ten percent off. But if we were to think about how a town would oversee that little bit of the calculation, right, to make sure that if one person dropped off, we'd find another resident, which I don't think would be too hard to find a list of people who want 10% off for free. Yeah. But the town could find a way to make some money in there too for that little bit of organizational piece. But it could provide a way, an avenue for residents who don't have access to solar or that renewable in that current way with their investment tax credit, you know, not having tax liability, et cetera. But anyway, it's a dream of mine to think about how that marries together at some point. Um, so, if you guys ever want to think about how these things finance differently, we can talk about the meeting. Yeah, I'll just add to that. I mean, one place that has for a long time been considered for solar is down at the treatment plant, um, and it might be worth your just Up stopping down, down, down there. It's down and in Nook, out. though. Yeah, it is in a Nook, but you know it's got I, good I, exposure. It but does the a better spot honestly is the town garage? Yeah. The town garage could fit a hundred and fifty or a three hundred kilowatt project. Yeah, out there. we've got some acres. And could be offering yeah. anyway. It's a way that. You could bridge a gap. Mm -hmm. It would be a very, very novel thing for a town to stand behind something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, 
animal control officer. Well, I was hoping that Andrew was going to be here. So Andrew Cottrell was the person that we talked about the last mm -hmm. time. He had sent Josh and I mm -hmm. both in email he came in and talked to me and i told him at this point right now the constable position i'm still kind of thinking we should push aside until we really understand what it is we need but he was still interested in the animal control so he came in and talked to me he was here for half an hour um he's a busy guy really busy he's well i told him it was like 200 bucks a month right now is what we have budgeted and you know what and he was willing to do it he asked about if we had, we had a vehicle i told him we didn't but we could buy some you know small whatever equipment's needed and um so he was still interested i thought he, he said he was going to come tonight but apparently he's not here um so i did call the i think it's jay meyer was the other one um I emailed him and asked him, told him we were bringing this discussion up again. We had somebody else that had contacted us, and was he still interested, and did he want to come in and talk to us? He emailed me back. Unfortunately, he got hurt in a, in a I think he was on a fire truck or something. He got hurt, and so he's going through some lengthy health things that yeah, we have. And so he said, if you have somebody else interested at this point, you should probably, yeah, let, let that person do it. Um, so I was comfortable with Andrew. I really wanted you guys to meet him before we appoint him. So maybe I can have him come to the next meeting or find yeah, out why he, yeah. um, you know, why he could make it or if he's changed his mind or whatever yeah. it may be. But um, that's the update on it. So we still just have the one person, but you know, like I said, I did contact Jay and he's in the middle of some rehab stuff. So okay. we'll bring that back. Good. Request for reduction of allocation. So in your packet, there's an email from Ellen Holmes. Um, she had come in and talked to me back in August. I told her to send me a letter. And basically what she had was a single family dwelling with a cottage and then like a mother-in-law apartment. So it was a separate living unit. She has since um, changed it back to single family dwelling with just the cottage. So she's been paying for three ERUs um, and is requesting for a reduction back to the two ERUs because of the change in what she um, what she actually has there now. She has no intention of um, renting the other space or using it for a separate living unit anymore. So I told her I would bring it to you and see how you felt about that. Any reason we wouldn't approve it? No, I mean, like I this? did tell her that, you know, at some point if you decide to change it back, it may be that we don't have the ability right. to. I don't see that happening for one unit. Yeah. But, um, no, I think that we want to be fair. I mean, we've done it with other yeah. people, and we just want to be fair that people are being charged for what they actually have. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Like action on that? Yes, please. Right, we'll make a motion to uh, fulfill the request for a reduction of allocation at 167 Westminster Road. Um, if you want to add something about it, as discussed with the town manager. Or... No, it's right. Because okay. the application's here. It shows all of it. Okay. Been moved and seconded to approve the reduction in allocation for. 167 Westminster Road. If there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, capital asset policy. Well, I was going to write that today and I started writing it and it became more of a project than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so it's not. So moved. <laughs> so I have it. Two of the, the I know this. Oh, is I, that's what I my second one was. Is that the, yeah. I, I lost mine. Okay. I just must have given you. Basically, just to give you a brief, his, the, the capital asset policy, when the auditor was going through capital assets this year, our policy didn't really match the way our capital plan was as far as useful life of a particular asset. So he suggested that we rewrite it so that the two match and then add some more language. Um, to it. So I started to pull some other towns policies and then I started to look at Gatsby and 
when I started, I'm like, okay, this is more complicated than I, I thought I was just gonna add some ranges of years. And um, so I'll bring that back. I'll send a copy to you before the next meeting. That way you'll um, be able to see it before I just bring it to the meeting. That's good. I'll be next. He won't be happy that it's not done, but. All right, so we come to carpet update. So I was waiting for estimates to come in last Friday, and well, we had one person come in and look, and they pulled the carpet up, and the tiles underneath the carpet, we believe, are asbestos. Oh, that's just so <laughs> Can't we just glue the carpet back? <laughs> so, well, the carpet's glued to it. Oh, of course. Cool. So. Um, I've sent the I've sent the tile the tile piece that came up for a sample. I've sent the sample in. I should get it back by this week. Okay. Um, so it is what it is. What are you gonna do? I mean, yeah. they can't pull it up without disturbing it. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. So um, we'll just wait. I just wanted to get 100% confirmation back that that's that they were, and um, we'll have to add that to the cost. Cost. Um, Is there any kind of abatement funds yeah. or stuff like that? Uh, that would be worth exploring. Yeah. 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 Not, not that I'm aware of, but yeah, no. I, I no there might be prevent stuff. Yeah, there, know, but, uh, yeah. yeah, and Catamount, if you were to contact. Well, I'm gonna, I'm going to let the carpet installer talk to somebody because they're going to have to coordinate. Do they? They will hire somebody. So the two carpet installers that are interested in this job, I've talked to both of them. Yeah. And I've said to them, look, I don't have a lot of time to coordinate dates and times and who you're working with. Right. And, and I said, so if it comes back that this tile is asbestos, then I would really like you to hire a contractor to do it so that you guys can work the schedule out. I don't have to be in the middle of it because we're going to have to Move everything Move around. Well, and I've I've included in the in the um, request for them to we'll get rid of right. all the do stuff, the do the furniture right. too. So yeah. I just want you to coordinate it all. I just mm -hmm. I yes, right. I get that it's going to cost a little bit more money, but we just don't have the time or resources to yeah. do it in here. So um, they each had somebody that okay. they have already yeah. um, talked to or have dealt with in the past. So. Um, Hopefully, it won't drag it out. I mean, we, we do have one um, installer that said that they would do weekend work, so that would help with closing the office a little bit more. So we'll see what they come back with, but I'm waiting for that to come back. So that's pushing that project a little. Nothing is easy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other thing I just wanted to let you know that I did sign the grant agreement and sent it back for the sewer project. Um, so that's been signed. And tomorrow I'm going to a training in the morning, um, but then I'm meeting Dufresne up in Springfield to find out where we are with that project. Um, it looks like they're close to being done. Sounds good. So I'll just go on to the next thing. Um, so that, this paper here, the one that mm -hmm. Josh, you had the yeah. extra one. Yeah. No, that's not it. It's the other one. It's still the highway cost, wages. Cost yeah. So when Laura was filling out a wage and benefit survey from VLCT the other day, and she said, Cynthia, something's not adding up in these numbers. So at the top, you can see where it says, uh, I highlighted the summer wages, winter wages, and the 184000 mm -hmm. That's the number I used for budget. That number does not include overtime of $14,000. So our current budget is there's no money in there for overtime. It was it was a mistake in the formula. I didn't I didn't add that. So I talked to Brian about it, and thank goodness we found it before we spent it all and and didn't account for it. So we're gonna we're gonna work the budget so that we have some other areas that we won't spend some stuff. The paving came in a little less than we thought it was going to. Plus, we have the cushion of the wages last year. So this is for surplus. this is for this sixteen is, seventeen. Yeah, this is for yeah. the year that we're in. Okay. So there's a note in the file to make sure the formula works for the budget <laughs> that we're preparing. But I'm glad that we found it now, so that we didn't all of a sudden be like, God, why are wages so far? Over? 
Um, the other thing that is going to affect us, and I'll probably have to bring it to you, maybe not in, it'll probably be the second meeting in October. We've got to figure out what to do with the salary, um, the two salary people that don't meet the new yeah. um, minimum for salary wages for the new change in the law. Um, and that is December 1st is when that starts. Yeah. I, it really isn't going not to much be. we can do. Right. I mean, we can, put, we can put them on hourly, or we can increase their salary, the, the little bit that's needed to be the minimum that we can pay somebody that's on salary. So, so just to jump back to this for a minute, this 14698 yeah. is already been spent? In, no. Right. No. So that's an estimated, estimated. expense. It's estimated for, anyways. Of course, over time it's always right, estimated. Right, right, okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I was yeah. assuming. So, yeah, okay. so that's why it's good we caught it now. That way we can, you know, maybe we have another mild winter and we don't spend. Right. Or we get hit. That's a number that's she always. Just cursed us. <laughs> <laughs> We're damn now. <laughs> that's always a number that can go crazy on us anyways. Right, up or down. Yeah. Or whatever. That's, okay. yeah. So if there was a number I was going to screw up on, that's a better one than so um, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I should I should knock on wood on that one we'll probably find another one. Yeah. <laughs> um and then the surplus I just wanted to circle back with the, the last meeting or the meeting before we moved money to the highway fund, the fifty three thousand. Mm -hmm. And I had said that the audit was not done yet and that if there was a change in fund balance it was going to come from the general fund. Mm -hmm. So, we ended up having to make a journal entry of 12668 for deferred taxes. So, once, so at the end of the fiscal year, and what I reported at that meeting was that we had a fund balance of 60235 That's what the town fund balance would be. After the end of August, we had to account for any taxes we hadn't collected up to that point. Um, and that ended up being a $12,000 entry I had to make. So it reduced our fund balance down to 47, which I kind of figured that was, it was gonna be around eight to 12,000 depending on who paid and who didn't pay. So last year at the end of the year, or the end of August, we had a $69,000 deferred tax balance. Mm -hmm. This year it was 82,000. And that includes taxes that were due in August or not? No, no. that's just that's last just year. Last it's just year. last year. Okay, that's Yeah, right. so basically, for people that don't understand or don't, you know, just people watching, you can't include the revenue that you haven't collected. That you haven't collected. We're allowed 60 days after the end of the mm -hmm. year to try to collect more. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever we're left with at that end of the year, we have to take out of our revenue. We can't include it as part of our re revenue. So uh -huh. what's our total? Um, Delinquents? Delinquents, yeah. Um, where does that get? Right now, later? that's 85000 huh? Oh. If it is paid up later, where does that? What happens that, is that this entry this, next year, gotcha. Yeah, 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 it'll catch yeah. up. So that's where it's important to really. I strive every year to keep that number just about the same because you're mm -hmm. never going to be at zero. Right. Right. Um, so well, I shouldn't say never. But I mean, Robin Hand has taken the stance that if you're approach. six months right. over, you're up for tax sale. <laughs> So, you know, and there are other towns that do that too. So you can be, at, but I at Very least close. strive yeah. for this to be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. It's some years there's people that have a lot bigger tax bill that's delinquent than other years, and you're able to collect that in the, right. you know, tax sales happen, they have to be paid at that And point. correct me if I'm wrong, but my sense is that 85 is actually significantly lower than it has been in the past at times. And at it's times, typically, yeah. I mean, it did, for a number of years, it seems to me it was typically more like 120. Yeah, maybe, it's been higher. Know, yeah, it's yeah. been it's been hovering around that 69 to 80,000 for quite a while because I haven't had to make big entries for the past few years. Um, but it does affect the fund balance. But the key is getting the money in. You know, so the cash flow is there. It keeps coming in. It's right. just then, then this entry doesn't ever get made until the end of the year. Right. So, um, so that's a change, and I just wanted to point that out so everybody was aware of it. And the audit is 
I think it's pretty much done. He's working on the financial statements, so we should have a um, final pretty soon, which is early, really early. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, he did. He did write off those dog licenses. We wrote them off finally. Just, just yeah. not uncollectible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, How much was that? I think it ended up being like twenty-seven hundred dollars, twenty-nine hundred. Yeah. I say he wrote it off. I haven't written it off yet, so that'll affect the fund balance by a little bit too. Yeah. Because that's showing as, as it has shown as revenue in the past. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Sounds good. Yeah. Warrants. Oh, maybe I should tell the lister. Do you want me to wait until you're done signing those, or do you want me to tell you, just fill you in on that whole lister? Have you heard the lister, the article in the comments that came out about the lister training? Okay, well, I'll fill you guys in. I don't know if you I know you've, you said you've heard about it, right? I, I haven't read the article yet, but I did hear. So, basically, the, I don't was it a couple weeks ago, the listers came in to talk to us about training? Mm -hmm. I um, the headline a few days later in the newspaper was town officials not satisfied or upset with state training requirements. I don't know. Don't quote me on the, whatever the, whatever the headline was, it was a little unfortunate. Right. We were questioning. But there was a little bit of, I can yeah. see where they got it from. Yeah. So, so the article itself was fine. It was what we said. <laughs> But it created a little bit of a firestorm across the state because I got a phone call from the ballot president, the director of PDNR, <laughs> an assessor somewhere else, asking me what we were talking about, that there was no training requirements and none coming up in the near future. And that it had been talked about, but even if there is going to be a certification done, it's going to be a basic certification that is going to be a le below a level one certification needed. But at this point right now, they don't even know what that curriculum is or what there was. So there was a lot of. So this was about the lack of training in the southern part of the state? Or no, this was about the training at all. The, the, the training having to meet, having these, to meet certifications these certain to, certifications in order to sign the 411 is how it was presented to us. And is that not is, the case? It is not the and case. Apparently it's oh. not the case. And okay. how did our so you were come to be informed? Uh, okay. it, was, was, it was discussed at a VALA meeting that this is a possibility. Possibility as opposed to a mandate. Yes. So I, that was the question. I, I did explain to that. the state official that I talked to that I, I think we all understood that it was not mandated right this second, but that we thought it was coming up quite rapidly. And they were, the listers were trying to be proactive in making sure we understood the cost, that this was coming. It really was a proactive measure, that there wasn't any, you know, malicious intent of trying right. to say, I said, and yeah, I probably did come across as, I don't understand. Well, you, what the heck? <laughs> Why is nobody <laughs> getting upset about this? Right, this right, seems right. extreme. Well, yeah, I yeah. said I and I, I said to him, I totally we was on that mm -hmm. bandwagon of I don't get it. And so it's all been cleared up. They have it is not mandated right now. The listers are still taking some of the training, but I had a meeting with the listers last week and discussed with them what I had been told. And so I think, I didn't talk to them after the meeting, but I think that they readjusted their training their schedule. training schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, I told them it was absolutely important that they went to the VALA meeting and that I was not telling them we shouldn't do training, but we need to be smart about our training. If it's not mandated, then let's right. back right. it down a little bit. Yeah. So um, it did create, it was two days of phone calls for me of people calling and going, I don't understand what you guys are talking about. Where did you get this information? Listers worried that they had missed something, that they weren't getting the training that they needed. It went out on the listserv. I mean, it just, 
Vermont Digger wanted the story. <laughs> so um, there was an article. There was an article in the comments, and then today, I think if you see the comments today, there was a letter to the editor, and I believe maybe she was a lister in Athens, trying to clear this Clarify. up. Right. I think that's yeah. right where the question that's in what are smaller towns like Jamaica or uh, Yeah, she was really trying to. to that the, yeah. Mostly because I don't know that she knows that we understand now that that we may not have had absolutely accurate information right. and so she wrote this letter saying you know I saw this and it was I thought I had missed something and then she explained it all so just so you're aware that it's been talked about I mean, yeah. fair enough, I think just like those angry incoming calls yeah. it was kind of fun though I mean I talked to people I haven't talked to in a while I'm friends with a lot of the people that called me for, through my last job so take this off yeah. Um, all right. Anything else? Do we no, I think. No. Session? No. no um, the I am. There was a public safety committee meeting on Monday night. Did you get that? Yeah. Um, and then at that meeting, we will figure out when the next public oh, right. meeting. Not that the public safety committee meeting right. is not public, right. but it's right. not the big, the big bigger area. meeting. Larger forum. And we'll decide when that one will be. Which I think will be October, and we have, we have more information. You know, we've got some data that Lawrence is putting together as far as crime statistics and and that kind of thing. London Dairy called me; they're interested in coming to our public meeting because I think they're, even though right now they're with the state the police, they're kind of right. in the same. They're still thinking about what they want to do next. So and, and I've met with Keith since too. Many people that were on the. Um, there's a group that all was getting emails about this, but there was an arrest made over in Chesterfield or West Chesterfield. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard that. That um, some of the some of the items that had been uh, stolen during that period of robberies on out on Hickory Ridge, there were some part of that. recovered. They also recovered items from several other towns yeah. um, so it was clear and that the question was whether this was one of the perpetrators or whether it was just a fence um, and, but but some progress was made in the exploration of, yeah. of what had happened with this so. I did meet with Keith to let him know what happened at the meeting he is going to be at the meeting Monday night okay um, so I think there's been. And it's at seven, right? Yeah. I don't know if there's progress, but there's, I think, more information for us to talk about and then talk about how we want to have, what do we want to do with the next meeting. Um, because we're coming up on. Budget time. Budget time and yeah. December 31st. Yeah. And yeah. 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 The only other thing I wanted to mention is I, we need to, at some point, and I don't know how we want to proceed with this, is get back to the discussion about that donated land. Yes. I know that Ann Carey has got a group, I think it's landmark students that are up there doing some clearing or something. No, Not they're mapping, they're mapping or 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 looking at what's up there. So maybe maybe I should touch base with her again and, and find out when that work is going to be done. Well, we should do, I, I know we got a letter from, I can't remember who it was from, um, somebody who had done some logging or forestry. Yeah. Um, it would be worth getting a timber assessment. For that property, um, just just so we know what's on it, okay. um, and whether we go to that same person or to somebody different, okay. I don't know. But it might might be worth exploring. Yeah, I just want to bring it back up so that we can start with something. Yeah, I mean, I know Nat was in here the other day. You know, I think he's curious if we're just going to let it sit there or we're just going to we're going to talk about it. So you know, it might be there's, there's just a thought about that. Is you know, say this year at town meeting we put out. Sort of a questionnaire, you know, that this is, you know, as a piece of information, you know, maybe mm -hmm. just see if we get a response in general, just as I do once again, as ideas. It's, mm -hmm. you know, nothing's yep. cast in stone here. If we get 10 people who can agree upon, you know, some set of thoughts about it or, or, or more, perhaps generate a little more interest <clears> in <throat> that. Also, you know, what's the rush? Ultimately. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Right. It's not like we need to, you know, put it on the tax rolls. I mean, I, you know, or something along those lines. So, you know, some yeah. thoughtful consideration of that property would be. Yeah. Well, I did sign. Yeah. I did sign up for town fair too this year, which is in October. Just to let everybody know. I don't know if anybody else wants to go, but they don't have a lot of goodies. They actually and, have some pretty good stuff. And where is it this year? Uh, at the Essex, the Champlain Valley. Was that that last Friday or this Friday? Or was that municipal? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's like October sixth or something. Okay. All right. Is that it? That's it. Motion to adjourn, I guess. Wow. Second. 45 minutes. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we got just desserts. Yeah, we're not part of that. Yeah, we got, yeah. there's a thing up at uh, Central School. So. Um, yeah. Did you approve that motion to adjourn? Uh, yeah, I think we oh, did. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Aye. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.